This week's Friday feature is sponsored by Liverboard.com, but more about them later. So scuba diving has been through a series of different marketing strategies throughout the years. So when scuba diving was marketed as dark and dangerous to appeal to the lads and the adventurers, fewer families signed up. When it was made to be light and happy and safe, the adrenaline seekers went elsewhere, so the public view on scuba diving shifts between the light and the dark. But the rules around scuba diving rarely change, and there are some really big scuba diving no-nos. Yes, scuba diving has become safer and safer, and most of it takes place in the sort of warm, sunny waters of the tropics, but it's still a serious activity, and the rules that you'll learn in your courses are there for a reason. And while some of these are definitely in your textbook, some of these you will have to learn on the waves. As a general rule of thumbs, never say any of these keywords or phrases to a fellow scuba diver as a few bonus no-nos. So never ever say goggles, oh, flippers, or an oxygen tank. I'm now going to have to make this video R-rated just for that noise you made. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, I'm Mark from Simply Scuba, and here are a few big scuba diving no-nos. You don't need to touch my stuff, just leave it alone. I've spent a lot of time and effort, and most importantly, money, on my dive kit, and I don't want to see people fiddling with it, especially when I'm underwater. So if you want to take a closer look at my setup, then by all means ask, and I'll probably say yes, so that we can both improve our setups. But I may have left my stuff in a certain way, so that way if you meddle with something and I don't notice, then I could be in trouble down the line. If you're trying to fix a problem that I've missed, then sure, great, but it's a great sentiment, but I'll never learn how to fix that problem now, will I? If you always assemble your buddy's kit for them every single time, then they're never going to do it for themselves, and they're never going to learn how to look for, and more importantly, fix a problem themselves. The same goes for in the water. Do not touch my stuff without telling me. There was a guy in the news recently who thought it would be a funny prank to turn other divers' air off, which is not hilarious. So it's insanely dangerous, actually. If there is something wrong with my rig, like a leak or an entanglement or something, or you need something from me, then definitely tell me, but I just screw around with my stuff without my knowledge. Also, if you've assembled someone else's gear or meddled in some way, and then something goes wrong, then the very best case scenario is you're gonna feel rubbish about it. The very worst case is that a jury of your peers may have to think about what you did. Hey, they cleared me of all charges. <laughs> the bribes helped. <laughs> <laughs> This one's obvious and should really have been drilled into you during your first course. So don't go down too deep, don't stay down too long, and don't come up too quick. They're the real basics. So dive computers will do their very best to keep you to this rule. So if you ignore your dive computer and skip a stop, or try to reset your deco in some way so that you can jump back in the water sooner, then you're just an idiot. So that extra five meters as well going down a bit deeper might not look that far, but to take a photo, that extra five meters can be all the difference to turn a happy recreational dive into a deco dive. And now your dive computer is showing you some really scary new symbols that you don't recognize or understand because you didn't read the manual. The same goes for overhead environments like caves and wrecks. Just because the water is clear and warm right now, if you don't have the right training or the equipment, then you can get lost fast. Getting lost in open water just means that you have to wait a little bit longer for the boat to pick you up, or you have a longer surface swim to get back to shore. On that note, bonus no-nos, don't forget your DSMB or signaling device. So getting lost in a cave or a wreck is much, much worse, and getting lost at a, or than getting lost at a dive site. It doesn't really matter where you do your safety stop, but if you can't physically get to the five meters, then you ain't gonna be making it back at all. In fact, don't touch anything underwater unless you absolutely have to. So corals, for example, might be made from calcium, but they can cope with really strong currents and marine life cruising in and around it, but it is actually surprisingly fragile. So corals get broken all the time by scuba divers who get too close to it and either flail around because they can't move in the water effectively, or they just don't seem to know where their limbs are at any given time in the water. That, or that they just don't understand that their feet are much, much bigger than they actually are whilst they're wearing fins. And that tiny little tap with your fins has just undone like a hundred years worth of growth. Sticky 
Sticky fingers are also not welcome on dive sites, so valuable artifacts from history and beautiful examples of nature are amazing to see, and that's why most of us dive at certain dive sites. But if you slip it into your pocket, then no one else is going to see it ever again, and all it does is just going to sit in your garden or your cupboard, and it gets forgotten about. Many things are actually quite dangerous as well to touch, not just for you, but for the marine life as well. There is plenty of potent venoms underwater, and marine life as well uses a lot of spikes and pointy bits to get such poisons into you, so no touching. Okay, it's that time of the video. Let's take a look at today's sponsor. Are you looking for the best scuba diving the world has to offer? Well, liveaboard.com is the right place for you. Liveaboard offers unique diving experiences around the world, including destinations such as the Maldives, Ariatol, Thailand, the Samilian Islands, and of course, the Red Sea. They feature 390 liverboards with more than 2,300 itineraries online, 24 7 multi language reservation teams ready to help you find the perfect diving holiday. To find out more about liveaboard.com, click on the link pinned in the comments below. Explore the oceans of the world in style and comfort with liveaboard.com. This should really go without saying, but if you're the kind of character that doesn't get on well with others, then you're gonna have a bad time on a dive boat. I know that you're probably paying them, but that doesn't mean that you can treat them or their ship like trash. Being rude, arrogant, or just, you know, that guy is the very easiest way to never get invited back and to just have a rubbish time in your trip. They probably won't do anything bad to you, but they're certainly not going to be going out of their way to help you out anytime soon. Everybody deserves respect in this world, and if you own a dive boat and some obnoxious diver just threw all their stuff all over your deck, expecting you to clean it up, what would you do, really? Remember that these people are directly responsible for hanging around for an hour on the surface whilst you go off on a jolly, and they also stick around to, you know, pick you up out of the water. So, you know, let's give them their due respect. Incidents are usually the result of a cascade of events and usually happen when something small is overlooked. Lots of little problems often add up to one big accident, so if you see something or feel something, then try and fix it there and then, because if you skip past it, then it could contribute to something a lot worse. If your fin strap feels a little bit loose, then sure, you can work with that, but if your buddy needs help and one of your fins just falls off, then you're really not going to be any help at all, and the entire situation is going to be a lot worse than if you just take that extra minute or two just to sort out your little problem. Some divers are superstitious, a little too superstitious at times, but reading into little signs and feelings, but in my experience, it's better to just ask someone, hey, when's the last time that you tightened up that nut, or hey, that strap looks a little bit tired, then just wait for it to fail. That little conversation could be nothing, or it could save someone's life. That little wake-up call might make someone look twice and say, huh, maybe I should charge the battery up or swap that strap over, because if something's going to break, it won't break on the surface with everyone around you where it can sort it out by itself, it's going to be at depth by yourself in the suckiest situation possible. So there are just a few scuba diving no-nos, but I am pretty sure that you guys have a few of your own, so let's discuss in the comments below. If you have anything interesting to say, let us know. As ever, if you've made it this far in the video, let's discuss what you need to do now. So you've watched the video, so we can check that off our list. Uh, next on the list seems to be click on some kind of thumbs up icon. Try try that. Can you see one of those on your screen? Uh, yeah, click on that. Next is the subscribe button. You should really click on that too until it turns gray. Uh, if it's red, then you really need to click on that until it turns gray. Uh, anyway, just to say another thank you to liverboard.com for sponsoring this week's Friday feature video. Thank you for watching, and of course, safe diving. And your dive profile, and if you're going deep enough, you need to consider your gas mixes too. And that leads on to your mental state. So solo divers need to be calm under pressure, and it really doesn't matter how many dives you've done or how hard you think you are, you just have to be cool. I mean, I've heard of instructors bolting because their regulators 